Could Jesus' followers touch him? Now, this one actually takes a little bit more understanding. But again, it's easy to do the research and figure it out. Matthew 28, 9 says, As they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, Rejoice! So they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Okay, so Jesus shows up. The women are on their way to tell the disciples. Jesus encounters them on the road, and they go, and they fall down at his feet, and they, you know, hold his feet and touch him and grab him and hold, you know, hold on to him. In John 20, Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I have sent unto my father and your father and to my God and your God. So which is it? Do they fall down at his feet and touch him? Or does he say, no, no, don't touch me. The difference is between the words touch and cling. This is one of those things where the English is right, but not quite getting the depth of what's being mentioned there. Um, in order for this contradiction to work, you have to have John 20, verse 17, being read in the King James. Because the King James is one of the only translations, there might be one or two others, that use the word touch. All other translations say, do not cling to me. The Greek word, which is haptu, it implies the idea of fastening to something. Of, of, of gripping on, of laying hold of something. The idea is not just of touching him, laying your hand on him, but of grabbing hold and not letting go. And the idea is that he still has work to do. Kind of an interesting parallel. Um, just the other day, uh, maybe even yesterday, day before, um, Annabelle, my five-year-old, comes, you know, jumps up in my lap. Um, and of course, she does this right as I need to get up. I mean, I've got stuff to do. It's bedtime. i got to start getting things ready. But she jumps on my lap and says, I want to sit on you, Daddy. You know, so we need, Daddy has to get up, okay? You know, we'll, we'll, we'll snuggle in a minute. You need to get up. And so she um, slides off my lap onto my feet. And so I stand up, but she's sitting, literally sitting on my feet. And, you know, I'm like, sweetie, Daddy has stuff I need to go do so we can get ready for bed. And as I go to walk, she wraps her arms around my leg, you know, so that you have to walk, like, carrying, you know, like this big heavy weight. Okay, that's the idea. She's clinging to me to where I am encumbered. I have things to do that I can't go do because you're clinging to me. That's the idea of this word. Whenever Jesus says, don't touch me. The, the, the Greek word that's being used there is don't cling to me. Don't hold on to me. Don't fasten yourself to me. I still have things to do while I'm here before I ascend to the Father. It's not just don't touch me. And it'd be really weird if it were, because in that very same chapter, we have events where Jesus let somebody touch him. Somebody who's famous for being a doubter. Thomas. And in uh, verse 27, just 10 verses later, Jesus says to Thomas, reach your finger here, look at my hands, reach your hand here and put it in my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. So in the very same chapter, Jesus is saying, don't touch me. But then he goes on and says, hey, come here, touch me. D do you think John, you know, was just confused? And, and No. The, 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 in the one instance, he's talking about, don't cling to me, don't hold on to me, don't, you know, you, you don't encumber me, I've got work to do. He's not just saying, touch. Touch. 